So what type of professional organizer should you become? What skills do you already have that could help you start a career as a professional organizer? When I'm coaching organizing startups, this is one of the first questions I ask. In this video, we'll look at deciding what type of organizer you could be and six ways to make your services more visible. Hi, I'm professional organizer, Katherine Lawrence. I help you live a life with less clutter so you can have space for the things that truly matter. So why is it important to know what type of organizer you will be when starting out? Well, in order to appeal to potential leads in your market or get referrals from other businesses, they need to know if you are the right organizer. Will you be a good fit or are you qualified to take on the project? It's better to be known as a specialist than a generalist. Think of the last time you needed to go to a doctor. If you have a heart condition, you'd go to a cardiologist or a foot issue, you'd go to a podiatrist. You don't go to a general practitioner for everything. If you create a website that says you are a home organizer and work with everyone on all types of projects, potential leads may not trust you and referral sources in your community will not know what type of jobs are a good fit for you. According to NAPO, professional organizers support evaluation, decision making, and action around objects, space, and data helping clients achieve desired outcomes regarding function, order, and clarity. Productivity consultants support evaluation, decision-making, and action around time, energy, and resources, helping clients achieve desired outcomes regarding goals, effectiveness, and priorities. So that's really vague, right? You can't go to a networking event and say, I support evaluation, decision-making, and action around objects. It's easier to find clients as an expert in a specific area of organizing or productivity. So instead, I want you to practice describing your services like this. I work with seniors to downsize their homes so they can transition to a more manageable lifestyle. I work with overwhelmed moms to create a system of organization to help them get through the day and have more quality time with their family. I work with entrepreneurs and work from home employees to create organized, productive, and creative home offices. By the way, these are also samples of things to add to your elevator pitch or ways to quickly introduce yourself at networking meetings. Here is a list of the many types of organizers from the NAPO website. I'll leave this up for a minute so you can take a screenshot. I also have a complete list in the blog version of this post on my website, and the link to that blog is in the description of this video. You can see this is a mix of populations to work with and types of projects. I've also added Kunmari to the list as it does not appear yet as a specialty on the NAPO website, but they probably should add it as it is a fast growing specialty within the organizing community. You can also get a list like this on my niche worksheet that is included in my free professional organizers launch guide and my workbook, the professional organizers blueprint. Both of those links are in the description of this video as well, or the links in my bio. If you are watching this on IGTV, determining what type of organizer you want to be comes down to a combination of your previous experience, plus the population and environment you want to work with. When I decided to leave my corporate job, I wanted to work in homes with people who had the time and motivation to examine the things in their lives and downsize their belongings to create a simpler, more manageable lifestyle. Ultimately, that meant working predominantly with empty nesters, retirees, and stay-at-home moms and eventually led to my work in extreme clutter environments and my certification as a KonMari consultant. In my niche worksheet, I'll take you through an exercise that asks questions like, what skills from previous careers could help you as a professional organizer? And do you have experience working with specific populations? So how is all of this going to help you market your business? How will clients find you? How does a potential client know that you are the right organizer for them? How will other organizers or businesses know to refer to you? It comes down to do enough people in your community know about and understand the valuable services that you provide. Here are six ways to increase the visibility of your business. 
write content for your website and social media with tips and articles showcasing your knowledge. Attend networking events and talk about specific examples of how your services helped someone get organized. Give workshops in your community that showcase your skills and provide tips to a particular demographic. Get featured in local media with organizing advice, photos from a project you completed, or a testimonial from someone you helped. Connect with and share business with organizers that do not specialize in the same niche. List your business and specialties on referral sites like Napo, Find My Organizer, Thumbtack, Angie's List, and so on. When I'm working with a new organizer to launch their business, I ask them to imagine being in a room with 50 other professional organizers and one potential client walks in and describes the type of help that they need. Maybe it's unpacking after a move, clearing out a hoarder's house, or designing a high-end closet. Your goal is to be so well known in your community that the other 49 organizers in that room turn to you and know that you are the expert that can help that client. So what type of organizer would you like to be? Let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos on downsizing, decluttering, and the business of organizing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.